at the very heart of uh, the study of real analysis lies the notion of differentiability and integration. And these two notions are tied together by the very beautiful fundamental theorem of calculus. Complex analysis also, the things are quite similar at the very heart of the study of complex analysis, the notion of complex differentiability and complex line integrals lie. And they are also tied together by a variant of the fundamental theorem of calculus. There is a further variant of this fundamental theorem called the Cauchy's theorem, which lends certain amount of rigidity to complex differentiable functions, thereby making the theory very beautiful. In this lecture, we will define complex differentiability and explore some of its properties. So, let us begin by recalling the notion of differentiality over the real numbers. So, recall. Recall that a function f from u to r is said to be differentiable at a point Oh, so, what is u? Uh, u contained in R at a point x0 in u if uh, x0 is an interior point of u and the following limit exists and limit x going to x0 and x in u minus x0 of f of x minus f of x0 by x minus x0 exists. If this limit exists, we say that a function f, a real valued function f defined on u is differentiable at the point x0. We then say that, uh, okay, let us denote this the the limit is denoted by f prime at x0 and f prime of x0 is said to be the derivative of f at x0 which is called the derivative of f at x0. And if f happens to be uh, differentiable at every point x uh, in u, then we say that f is differentiable on u. Let us somehow mimic this definition. Let us adapt this definition to the complex variable setting. We are going to be defining complex differentiability very similarly. So, complex differentiability. So, let omega be a subset of C and f be a map from omega into C. Let us consider a complex valued function on omega. We say that f is complex different. I am going to adapt the definition verbatim in fact by making the relevant changes. We say that f is complex differentiable. at a point z0 in omega if z0 is an interior point and the following limit exists and limit z going to z0 where z is in omega minus z0 if this uh, okay, which limit f of z minus f of z naught by z minus z naught exists. If this limit exists, then we say that f is complex differentiable at the point z naught. The limit is denoted 
by f prime at z naught or as df by dz at z naught. So no, remember that f prime at z naught is a complex number or df by dz at z naught is a complex number. And if f is differentiable or rather complex differentiable, I should be very careful. If f is complex differentiable at every point z naught uh, at every point z in omega, then we say that f is holomorphic on omega. We say that f is let me uh, say complex differentiable on omega or holomorphic on omega. I will slowly start using that word holomorphic on omega or holomorphic on omega. There are variants of this particular definition. Uh, the first definite, the first variant would be an epsilon delta variant. So, how do we capture that? Uh, we say that f is differential, complex differentiable at z naught if there exists a complex number f prime at z naught in C such that absolute given epsilon positive and given epsilon positive there exists delta positive such that the disk of radius z naught sorry disk of radius delta around z naught is contained in omega and absolute value of f of z minus f of z naught by z minus z naught minus f prime of z naught is less than epsilon whenever 0 is less than mod of z minus z naught is less than delta. You notice carefully we have just rewritten the definition above uh, in the epsilon delta setting which you will be familiar with. So, another variant of the definition is uh, using is in, in terms of uh, approximate linearization. Uh, we say that f is complex differentiable at z naught. So, the setting is the same. I am not writing the setting again and again. f is a complex valued function from omega into uh, c and z naught is some interior point in omega. <coughs> f is complex differentiable at z naught if there exists a complex number, if there exists f prime at z, uh, z naught in c uh, and e of okay such that f of z e is equal to f of z naught plus f prime at z naught times z minus z naught plus o of small o of z minus z naught where small o of z minus z naught is equal to z minus z naught times e of z where e of z goes to 0 as z goes to z naught. So, notice that the limit is being taken along any complex uh, any any sequence of complex numbers converging to z naught. So, this is uh, very similar to how we had defined the differentiability on the real line and some of the consequences there immediately carry forward here as well. So, for example, if a function is complex differentiable at a point z naught then the function is necessarily continuous. Let me make that uh, observation, uh, maybe a lemma. If f from omega to c is complex differentiable at omega contained in c at the point z naught in omega, then f is continuous at omega at, at z naught.
the proof is immediate because uh, if you write down the uh, linearization uh, approximate linearization here for example what do we have we have f of z minus f of z naught is f prime of z naught times z minus z naught plus o of z minus z naught and we know that as z goes to z naught o of z minus z naught goes to zero <coughs> And f prime of z naught is fixed, therefore f of z minus f of z naught goes to 0 as z goes to z naught. And therefore f has to be continuous at z naught. So let me not write down a proof of this, it is just the same proof as in uh, the real variable setting, uh, one variable uh, real differentiable functions. In fact, in the complex setting, we get far higher regularity, but we will come to that later. Let us not worry about it yet. <coughs> Let us now look at uh, an example. Let f uh, of z be equal to z to the power n be defined on the complex plane. Omega here in this case is the entire complex plane. The function is quite straightforward, it is f of z is equal to z to the power n. And let us see if it is complex differentiable at a given point, fix z naught in C and let us see what is going to be f of z minus for z not equal to z not. We have f of z minus f of z not by z minus z not is equal to z to the power n minus z not to the power n by z minus z not. Uh, geometric series actually you should check sit down and check that this is exactly equal to z to the power n minus 1 times z naught um, z to the power n minus 1 plus z to the power n minus 1 times z naught n minus 2 times z naught plus up to z to the power n minus 1. This is precisely the geometric series which you can you can check this inductively if you want if you are not convinced you can prove this inductively that z, z to the power n minus z not to the power n by z minus z not is exactly equal to this. Now if you take limit as z goes to z not then This is going to be the limit of this, which is going to be z naught to the power n minus 1 plus z naught to the power n minus 1 plus up to z naught to the power n minus 1. And each of this is contributing ones, there are n terms. And hence, this is equal to n times z naught to the power n minus 1. So, as is to be expected, uh, the, the derivative, the, the complex derivative of z to the power n uh, turns out to be n times z to the power n minus uh, z, uh, at a point z naught turns out to be n times z naught to the power n minus 1. So, as is to be expected the uh, laws of calculus they actually carry forward to complex differentiable functions as well. For example, the uh, linearity property is satisfied if you look at uh, so let me write that down the laws of calculus are satisfied. So, for example, the same proof actually goes through. Uh, if f comma g are functions from omega contained in C to C uh, are complex differentiable at a point z naught, then so is f plus g with derivative with complex derivative f prime at z naught plus g prime at z naught. Uh, this is the additive property if c belongs to omega oh sorry if c is some complex number and uh, if we consider c times f then c times f is also complex differentiable at z naught and c times f 
the derivative of this at z0 is just going to be c times f prime at z0. So, the proof is exactly similar to the way we prove it in the real variable setting. So, I would uh, refer you to a, a, a proof uh, in say for example, principles of mathematical analysis Rudin and I will request you to sit down and give a very similar proof in this complex variable setting as well. It should go through, very similar proofs should go through. Well, not just the uh, linearity property, the product rule also holds. Uh, if f and g are maps from omega to omega be again some subset of c into c be complex differentiable at a point z naught in omega, then f g is complex differentiable at z naught with derivative f prime at z naught times g prime uh, g at z naught the usual Leibniz rule plus g prime at z naught times f of z naught. So, the usual product rule, this is called the product rule, right. I will call the product it's the same thing here. The first one was linearity, right. If you have a function which is complex differentiable at a point z0 and such that g is not vanishing there, okay. Quotient rule. Again, I will leave the proof to you, it is ex exactly similar to the real variable setting. If g, if f is, uh, if both f and g from omega contained in C to complex numbers be complex differentiable at a point z0, at z0 in omega. Suppose both f and g are complex differentiable at uh, z0 and suppose uh, g does not vanish at z0. Then by continuity of g, g does not vanish in a neighborhood of z0, right. Then by continuity g does not vanish in a neighborhood uh, d of z0, then f by g is complex differentiable at the point z0 in d, is complex differentiable at z0. So, slowly I will uh, stress upon the fact that the complex difference complex differentiable complex differentiability is a local property and therefore when I talk about complex differentiability at x naught when x naught is thought of as a point in D or whether it is thought of as uh, being complex differentiable at x naught when with x naught as a point in omega the difference is uh, uh, there is no difference, it is the same. The idea of complex differentiability is a local property at a given particular point. And the quotient rule also tells us that f by g prime at x naught is exactly equal to f prime at, at the point. So, I should not be using x naught here because I have taken the point z naught above. Right. So, the point here was z naught. So, let me again use z0 here, f by g prime at z0 is f prime at z0 times g of z0 minus g prime of z0 times f of z0 by g of z0 square. This is the product rule. Again, the proof is going to be similar there. And uh, finally, let me also talk about the chain rule. The chain rule is, what does the chain rule say? If you have f a function from omega into c and suppose 
v is a function from sorry g is a function from v to c such that v is sitting inside the uh, is inside the image of uh, f then if you consider g composed with f and look at the derivative then this is going to be g prime at f of uh, x naught times f prime at x naught that is the statement in the real, va real variable setting we will be able to say a similar statement in the complex variable setting as well so let f be a map from omega into c and be complex differentiable at a point z naught be complex differentiable at z naught in omega and uh, suppose g is a function suppose g is a function from say uh, d into c uh, such that g is complex differentiable at f of z naught at f of z naught f of omega is contained in d let us put this extra condition it is a local property if needed we could shrink our uh, omega to the small neighborhood where we are looking at the complex differentiability and we can still uh, realize the chain rule the way we need it so suppose this condition is also there then g composed with f is complex differentiable at z naught and further g composed with f prime at z naught is equal to as is to be expected g prime at f of z naught times f prime at z naught yeah let me not uh, skip the proof of this i have been skipping the proof of all the uh, elementary statements maybe i should give a proof of this so the fact that f is complex differentiable at the point z naught tells us that uh, f of z is equal to f of z naught plus z minus z naught times f prime at z naught plus o of z minus z naught which is just z minus z naught times e1 of z where e1 of z goes to 0 as z goes to z naught and the fact that g is complex differentiable at f of z naught so let f of z naught let's call it some name let w naught be equal to f of z naught so we are saying that g is complex differentiable at w naught and this is because f is complex differentiable at z naught there x is f prime at z naught and e1 of z such that this happens similarly since g is complex differentiable at w naught there x is a number g prime at w naught complex number and a function e2 of w such that g of w minus g of w naught or g of w is equal to g of w naught plus w minus w naught times g prime at w naught plus w minus w naught times e2 of w where e2 of w goes to 0 as w goes to w naught. Now let us approach w naught through f of z where z is a sequence so since f is con uh, differential complex differentiable at z naught it is also continuous at z naught and hence uh, zn uh, z if hence f of z converges to w naught whenever z converges to z naught so let us look at one such sequence of uh, point z converging to z naught and then we see that g of f of z so that sequence is equal to g of f of z naught is precisely what w naught is plus f of z minus f of z naught 
times uh, g prime at f of z naught plus f of z minus f of z naught times e2 of f of z. Let us write it down, uh, simplify it and write it down. This means that i e g of f of z minus g of f of z naught, this is equal to f of z minus f of z naught times g prime at f of z naught plus e2 of f of z. But what was f of z minus f of z naught? We already uh, have given a characterization of this number above. We know what this is exactly equal to as you can see here. And using that, this is going to be equal to, this is going to be equal to z minus z naught times f prime at z naught plus e1 at e1 of z. That is what f of z minus f of z naught will be. And this is going to be g prime of f of z naught plus e2 of f of z. If you look at the limit as z goes to z naught where z is in omega minus z naught of g of f of z minus g of f of z naught by z minus z naught. This is precisely what we are interested in, isn't it? Then this is going to be equal to the limit. Let me keep this just above. This is uh, going to be z going to z naught of uh, f prime at z naught, which is a constant, plus e1 of z times g prime at f of z naught plus e2 of f of z. Now, let us see what happens to e1 of z and e2 of z as z goes to z naught. The e1 of z uh, term uh, approaches 0 because as z goes to 0, e1 of z goes to 0 and because f is continuous as z goes to z naught, f of z goes to w naught and we know that e2 of uh, uh, z e2 of w approaches 0 as w goes to 0 and therefore this is equal to f prime at z naught times g prime at f of z naught and this is precisely what we had set out to prove. So, as you can see the proof is exactly like in the real variable settings. The, the proofs of the statements written above, they are also going to be exactly similar. Functions which are complex differentiable on the entire complex plane are called entire functions. So let me just note that down, that is a special name given to functions which are complex differentiable on the entire complex plane. Functions which are complex differentiable in on C on the entire complex plane are called entire functions. So, the example which I gave above, so for example, z going to z to the power n is an entire function, we just check that above, is not it? And now having all the laws of calculus for complex differentiable functions as well, we can say that uh, any polynomial in z is an entire function by using the laws of calculus above we have p of z which is equal to say a0 plus a1z plus up to a d z to the power d this is also an entire function is also is an entire function in fact, we know explicitly what the, the 
derivative of p at a point z naught is by the laws of calculus, isn't it? p prime at a point z naught, this is going to be equal to a1 plus 2a2 times z naught plus d a d z naught to the power d minus 1. This is precisely what the derivative is going to be because we are going to use the linearity property to establish this. So, the polynomials are entire functions. More examples, uh, we also defined rational functions. So, let r of z be equal to p of z by q of z. And we had noted that uh, this was defined on a set where q does not vanish on omega where q of z is not equal to 0. So, q remember that q is a polynomial and because of that it will have a degree say d and there should be less than or equal to d roots of q and therefore, uh, omega can be thought of as c minus finitely many points which is an open set. Now, q of z not equal to 0 by the quotient rule r of z is uh, a complex or holomorphic function by the quotient rule. I will slowly start using the word holomorphic when I want to talk about uh, the complex differentiability on an open set. So, the quotient rule tells us that r of z is holomorphic on omega. We have seen a few examples, let us also look at a few non-examples. Let us consider the function which is the conjugate, consider f of z being equal to z bar. We will see that this is not uh, complex differentiable at any point, so fix a point z naught. Then what will be f of z minus f of z naught? by z minus z naught. This is just going to be equal to z bar minus z naught bar by z minus z naught. So, let us take z to be z naught plus h for some complex number h. So, let z be equal to z naught plus h. Then what will happen is z bar is equal to z naught bar plus h bar and therefore f of z minus f of z naught by z minus z naught this is equal to h bar by h where h is not equal to 0. Right and as h goes to 0 z naught plus h goes to z. Uh, z naught plus h goes to z naught. So, we have we are in the right setting, right. So, limit uh, z going to z naught is going to be the same as the limit h going to 0 h bar by h. Now, let us see if this limit exists. Uh, minutes thought will tell you that based on how you approach uh, 0, this limit will have different values. So, for example, if h is uh, taking only positive, uh, only real values. Okay, let us do this. Suppose h converges to 0 along r, then h bar is equal to h and hence limit h going to 0 of h bar by h is equal to 1 because h bar is equal to h. And suppose the, this is the real axis ok. And suppose h goes to 0 along uh, i r the, the imaginary axis, then h will be something like i times x where x is a real number and what will be the conjugate of i x, i x is conjugate will just be minus i x and then uh, limit h going to 0 will be of h bar by h will be limit of minus 1 at every stage h bar by h will be minus 1 and this is going to be minus 1 which is not the same as the limit which we obtain when we go along the real axis. At any point 
z0 at any point z0 on the complex plane you take you fix any z0 we can show that the limit uh, of uh, the uh, uh, ratio f of z minus f of z0 by z minus z0 does not exist so this is a function which does not have uh, a complex derivative at any point let us now consider the function uh, f of z equal to absolute value of z square. Let us see what the situation there is. This is going to be absolute value of z square as a function is just z times z bar. So, notice that there is a z bar already featuring in you should start questioning whether this will have a valid uh, limit. Uh, at again let us fix a point z naught then f of z and z be equal to z naught plus h. Then f of z naught plus h, this is just z naught plus h times z naught plus h bar. And that is going to be equal to the absolute value of z naught square plus the absolute value of well, h h bar plus h z 0 bar plus h bar z 0. So, if you look at f of z0 minus, uh, plus h minus f of z0, this is going to be equal to h h bar plus h z0 bar plus h bar z0. And if you look at the ratio of z, f of z minus uh, f of z0 by z minus z0, z minus z0 remember is equal to h. And we have this is equal to h bar plus z naught bar plus h bar by h times z naught. And a similar argument as above tells us that along r along the real axis we have this converges to uh, z bar z naught bar plus z naught and along imaginary axis this converges to z0 bar minus z0 and both are equal if and only if z0 is 0. So, at any point away from uh, the origin the complex differentiability fails for this function. We will see more examples of complex differentiable functions in the form of uh, power series. Power series are those functions which are an infinite version of uh, polynomials. Uh, in the disk of uh, convergence where it, it does converge, polynomials and power series have many, many similarities. So, we will look at uh, the notion of power series in the next week.